Welcome back. You have just tuned in to Women's AM. This morning, I'm joined by Sister Nusrat, Sister Hannah, and our special guest this morning is Joyce Omoa. So welcome to the show, Joyce. Thank you very much for, for, for being here this morning and bringing with you all your expertise um, on the topic. Um, so I wanted to uh, firstly learn a little bit more about why you're um, involved in this campaigning for, for early awareness. And, and not just early awareness, it's around um, the kind of culturally sensitive and appropriate treatment for, for endometriosis. So what got you into this? That's right, Liz. Um, I worked for Endometriosis UK um, two years back. And during my uh, time there, I realized that um, even though endometriosis is a, a voluntary organization and they're working tirelessly, um, we needed to set up a system that will support ethnic minority group better. And that's how I came into um, the campaign because and we is, do is need it. Is there any kind of difference how, how it affects ethnic minorities or, or does endometriosis affect? people indiscriminately? Well, endometriosis is not just a gender yeah. or a woman's issue. It's a wider chronic issue that must be um, tackled. And it affects all women socially, um, ethnicity, right. the same. So there's no differentiation between um, cultural how and how it affects yeah, a so woman. So you're dealing more with how people from these um, communities are, are supported Indeed. through this. And, and our understanding of uh, menstruation and how we interpret pain that is associated with okay, menstruation. Well, I look forward to hearing more about this in our discussion, inshallah. Thank you for that. Without further ado, let's go straight to her views, where today we are discussing endometriosis. Lower back pain, swelling, longer or heavier menstrual cycles. These symptoms sound all too familiar to most women, but does that make it normal? Endometriosis is a condition that affects 2 million women in the UK, and yet we don't hear enough about it to recognise the symptoms that could be indicative of something, something different altogether. How do we recognise endometriosis and what can be done? As always, this is a live discussion, so please do share your comments and questions on this topic. The number to call is on your screen now, or why not tweet us at Islam Channel, hashtag WAM15. So Joyce, I'm going to come to you first of all. So what is endometriosis? Yes, endometriosis is when the lining of the womb, cells similar to that, grows outside side um, the um, cavity or on major organs such as ovaries. Now these cells outside the, a woman's womb um, react the same way that um, a woman's um, endometri endometrium or the lining of the womb reacts to progesterone and estrogen during our menstrual cycle. Okay. Now the difference is unlike the cells in our womb that sh shed in menstruation uh, these cells have no outlet. Okay. So over the course of time, they accumulate in our pelvic cavity on whichever organ they've attached themselves. So they basically just keep growing and growing, growing and growing, growing, and they'll attach to, to kind of different organs. Organs, and okay. then it, the resulting problem is it causes adhesions, it causes inflammation, cysts, and of course, um, excruciating pain and other symptoms. OK, it sounds very painful. So you said, you know, a little bit about the pain. Are there any other symptoms that, that people uh, might experience that could be indicative of, of endometriosis? Well, the signs and symptoms of endometriosis are quite wide. Um, I will separate it. There are the physical symptoms and there are the psychological symptoms. The physical symptoms, the most classic ones, are excruciating period pain, heavy bleeding, and of course painful sexual intercourse and back pain. And as you quite rightly said earlier, um, that um, the pain in your uh, hips area or and also when you're passing urine, when you're going to the toilet, right. and also, unfortunately, infertility. Ah, uh, OK. So because of the range of, of uh, symptoms, does it make it difficult to diagnose or is it relatively easy to diagnose? It is yeah. uh, very difficult to diagnose currently. Right. It takes uh, from the time a woman presents symptoms to the uh, GP to get an firm diagnosis, it could take up to seven to eight years. And I feel wow. in a minority um, ethnic women case, it could be longer because of the way we interpret and, um, period pain and the taboo 
who attach yes. to period yeah. pain. I think this is the thing, isn't it? Because, you know, some people have bad periods and they are just that bad period. So I think it, it's about familiarising ourselves with these symptoms. Um, Sister Hannah, can you expand a little bit more on these yeah. symptoms and how we should be more aware of this? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, obviously, I'm not a doctor, but in my research of this, I also found that, you know, the symptoms are incredibly broad, um, you know, even to something sort of, you know, as perceived as more common, such as, you know, just fatigue, diarrhea, constipation, nausea, um, you know, also it can be mistaken for, you know, other conditions um, that can cause, you know, pelvic pain, such as IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, but at the same time, it can also be accompanied by that. So I think that's always the important thing, you know, is to consult a medical uh, a medical doctor and seek that opinion yeah. to, you know, not sort of get worried unnecessarily, but at the same time, take the steps that are necessary. Yeah, absolutely. If that I, is think, the case. I think that's really good advice, isn't it? If you're yeah. concerned about anything, you can always just go to the GP just to check. There's no harm in getting it checked out, is there? But then it's important that when a woman is going to their GP, they are specific about the signs and symptoms that uh, they're going through yeah. because um, not all GPs can interpret what you're going through. Yes. So if you hold any information back, yeah. it's going to make it difficult. And also, as mothers, it's important we understand what these signs and symptoms yeah. are and don't pass off um, our daughter yeah. who could be experiencing pain as normal period pain that they will grow out of it because the impact of endometriosis is quite great because if you have a daughter who is having to take time off yes, every exactly. month, yeah. well think of how much education she's going to be behind and also job wise exactly. we know uh, economically endometriosis cost um, UK 2.8 billion wow. in terms of healthcare absenteeism and also the quality of life yeah. on a woman and also the family and also relationship yeah. so we can't really trivialize the impact yeah. endometriosis have on um, the society. Yes, on, on, on somebody's life, absolutely. And I think you made a really good point there about being very, very specific when you go to your GP. I know many GPs and it's a constant kind of battle when they say people don't give all the information and they kind of expect them to be mind readers. So I think that's something, you know, to be aware of when you go. Maybe even, you know, make a little diary of what you're experiencing, note it down, that kind of thing. So, Sister Nisra, I want to come to you now. Um, we've heard a little bit about the, um, uh, you know, the symptoms and, and, and uh, what's actually happening within the body. But, but who, who is more susceptible to endometriosis? Does it affect uh, an age group more or uh, an ethnic group more? I think when we come down to who's more likely or susceptible to endometriosis, any woman with menstrual periods can get it. So it's nothing um, specific to an ethnicity or any other social factors. Rather, it's, it can be sometimes also a genetic factor. Endometriosis um, commonly occurs between. Um, um, between the ages of 25 and 40 in women particularly but it can also occur um, also occur in younger women um, the condition is actually most common in women who do not have or have children also um, some research in terms of genetic um, predisposition suggests that endometriosis can be passed down to new generations through the genes of family members and some families may be more susceptible to endometriosis but the causes are a bit un uh, are unclear so there's still um, research in that yeah. field yeah so absolutely. but the bottom line is that anyone can get it regardless okay okay Okay. Um, so in terms of your work, obviously you're dealing with um, ethnic minorities. Mm -hmm. So um, obviously with everyone being susceptible to, to kind of getting this, every woman who menstruates being susceptible to getting this, how does your work um, differ for, from the more generic sort of support out there? How, how do you help ethnic minorities? Well, at the, currently Prime Health has been working on projects. I've carried out um, projects with Amadea Muslim women in Woking, right. whereby I'm actually in the process um, of completing a lot of my leaflets that in different ethnic languages and oh, okay. also the yeah. photos has to be culturally um, sensitive and appropriate yeah. so I've been working on that and with funding and and also in collaboration with endometriosis UK uh, we're aiming to develop a system that uh, is appropriate to support ethnic minority women both within the community and also develop a website that can 
an ethnic minority can go yeah. and read the information and in there, their language. And do you language. find the kind of taboos when you're talking to, to different ethnic minority groups, things that they don't like to say or don't like to talk about? Do you ever see anything like that? Well, the um, research I carried out within the London Borough of Enfield, within um, a few different Asian uh, women group, I found it very encouraging. Prior to that, yeah. as you quite rightly identified, men menstruation is a taboo subject. Yes. We don't talk about it. Yeah. But once I engaged with those women, it, the it, results was overwhelming. But it, I feel that the results I'm getting prove that ethnic minority women, um, actually the diagnosis time could be longer than the current yeah. seven years. Yeah. I mean, I think it's positive to kind of get out there and get talking and to give yeah. these you know women in general a platform for this yeah. uh, we have to pause this really interesting discussion right now to go to a quick break but don't go far because when we return we'll be asking how can this condition affect fertility before we go here's a reminder of this week's competition